Thanks, uh, Dr. Weigel. Uh, I'll try to limit my initial observations uh, to three or four, two or three minutes, as you are mentioning, and I'll try. Uh, I have basically, I'll touch on four simple issues, I think, which uh, are important, which have been discussed in the past, yesterday as well as in the breakaway sessions. The very first one is on the issue of uh, availability of technologies. And in this, I will not limit my comments on the issue of the low cost or the no cost uh, energy efficient options or what many times people call it as the low hanging fruits. We've discussed a lot, yes, these can be done. One can find out the solutions through uh, small energy audits, small tinkering here and there. But I will try to limit my comments on to the second point, which uh, Prashanto referred to yesterday in his uh, opening remarks, what he called as through the quote from Azim Premji about what he referred to as transformational technologies. Those technologies which I understand which can make a major difference in the SMEs in terms of their, when we are looking at energy efficiency here, those which can make a major difference in terms of energy reduction. So I'll just limit my comments on that and I believe, to the, I personally believe and I think many of us believe that when we are talking <laughs> about availability of technologies, the answer to this is I've seen in many cases a simple no. We don't have those technologies I simply believe which are readily available for the industrial units. They might be available, we'll need to customize these technologies to see, suit the local needs. I'll give this example with the work which we are doing with uh, uh, Professor Suzuki just to ensure that the continuity remains. Uh, like the example what he gave of this electric heat pumps, it seems a very simple technology. There's electric heat pump available, we can get it from either from Japan or anywhere and then just put it there. But even by giving this example, we have people from Chandigarh where this plant will be set up and we are going to put the same technology in uh, Gujarat. But if you really look at it, the kind of investment which is required, and we are simply in that uh, chart which he showed towards the end, there are 10 steps and we are just at the second step at this stage. So what it requires is that even for a technology which we are calling as electric heat from, which will be one of the first to be implemented in the country, there are differences in Chandigarh. Very simple thing is that we are talking about the temperature ranges. There is a difference in the temperature of the water which will be used for heating and cooling in Chandigarh and in uh, Gujarat. There are differences between day and night. There are differences from June to December. There's a lot of difference which customization will need to be done. And this is where we are working with one of the best experts in Japan to transfer this technology to India. So there are many steps in terms of customization. The second example very quickly I would like to give is the work which we did with the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation in relation to the work which we carried out in uh, the glass melting furnaces. I will not take much time. Many of, many of you can go through the CDs which we have given in the kit, uh, which is available in, your, uh, in the form of CD and for some the books also are there. The best example which I can think of this kind of a, what we call it as a RD, D and D program, basically research, development, demonstration and deployment. So we have followed the entire cycle of all these 10 steps which Professor Suzuki referred to. And in fact, we have gone to the 11th step, which is the dissemination. His, he ended his uh, cycle at the demonstration stage, but we have been struggling and we have been able to achieve the final results in the last eight years in the dissemination point. So this brings me to the second point. The first one basically is that yes, there is a need to develop and customize the technologies to suit the local conditions. If you're talking about real, really making major differences in terms of energy efficiency, the second brings me to the issue of dissemination, which is the last D in the R, D, D, and D part. Uh, Mr. Srinivasan also referred to the need for hand-holding, and this is our firm belief, yes, hand-holding is extremely important. Uh, when we started working with the SDC in the early 90s or the mid-90s, one used to get a, one used to hear that, yes, if you demonstrate a technology in a cluster, if one person does it, the second person will immediately adopt it. But I personally believe that is not the case. You need to work very closely with the industrial units. For simple technologies, for simple things, yes, they will adopt it. But others, you will have to do the handholding and help the SMEs adopt these new technologies. Uh, the third one which I wanted to refer was, I think, on the broader aspect, which is related to technology transfer. These two examples which I gave of the Swiss example where we got the technologies from the Swiss experts as well as the British experts, and this new other example which we are trying with the Japanese experts. I think there is a need for us to really work closely with the international experts and see that the best available technologies internationally can be adopted for the Indian SMEs. So need for technology transfer and technology transfer not in terms of just 
the hardware technology, the know-how, and more importantly, the know-why of the technology, I would say. And the last one, since one minute is left, and the basic point I wanted to mention in the last one minute is, I think, uh, the importance of capacity building and skill development, and also the mindset issue. I was in the breakaway session yesterday. Uh, there were lots of questions on the skill development and mindset issues, I think. So I think these are extremely important issues, extremely important points, and uh, they should go hand in hand with the technology dissemination cycle. Simple classroom sessions probably are not the solution for SMEs. I believe practical sessions with the operators in flexible hours, the way we are doing with some of the units in Howrah for foundries, I think these are the answers for this. And not to also minimize the importance of the issue which uh, you, which I think Sunil raised in the uh, concluding, in the summary about uh, industry academia linkages. I think these are extremely important if one has to look at the longer term. Thanks a lot.